Hi guys, welcome to the last section of this course, multi-threading with distributed computing. In this section, we will take a look at distributed computing in a nutshell, installing open MPI, MPI communication. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with distributed computing in a nutshell. In this video, we will use MPI and compile MPI applications. When it comes to processing large data sets in parallel, it would be ideal if one could take the data, chop it up into lots of small parts, and push it to a lot of threads, thus significantly shortening the total time spent processing the said data. The idea behind distributed computing is exactly this. On each node in a distributed system, one or more instances of our application run, whereby this application can either be single or multi-threaded. Due to the overhead of inter-process communication, it's generally more efficient to use a multi-threaded application, as well as due to other possible optimizations, courtesy of resource sharing. A basic Hello World OpenMP application looks like this. What one can easily tell from this basic example is that OpenMP provides a C-based API through the OMP.h header. We can also see the section that will be executed by each thread, as marked by our pragma OMP preprocessor macro. This line of code fork a team of threads, giving them their own copies of variables. With OMP, get thread num function, we obtain thread number. If TID is equal to zero, it means only master thread does this. OMP get num threads return the number of threads in parallel region. At last, all threads join master thread and disband. In order to schedule the execution of code on specific nodes, MPI, message passing interface, is commonly used. OpenMPI is a free library implementation of this and used by many high ranking supercomputers. MPICH is another popular implementation. MPI itself is defined as a communication protocol for the programming of parallel computers. It is currently at its third revision, MPI 3. In summary, MPI offers these basic concepts. Communicators. A communicator object connects a group of processes within an MPI session. It both assigns unique identifiers to processes and arranges processes within an ordered topography. Point-to-point -point operations. This type of operation allows for direct communication between specific processes. Collective functions. These functions involve broadcasting communications within a process group. They can also be used in the reverse manner, which would take the results from all processes in a group and, for example, sum them on a single node. A more selective version would ensure that a specific data item is sent to a specific node. Derived data type. Since not every node in an MPI cluster is guaranteed to have the same definition, byte order, and interpretation of data types, MPI requires that it is specified what type each data segment is, so that MPI can do data conversion. One-sided communications. These are operations which allow one to write or read to or from remote memory, or perform a reduction operation across a number of tasks without having to synchronize between tasks. This can be useful for certain types of algorithms, such as those involving distributed matrix applications. Dynamic process management. This is a feature which allows MPI processes to create new MPI processes or establish communication with a newly created MPI process. Parallel I.O., also called MPI I.O. This is an abstraction for I.O. management on distributed systems, including file access for easy use with MPI. Another very common implementation is OpenMPI, which was formed out of the merger of three MPI implementations, FTMPI, LAMPI, LAMMPI. Regardless of the implementation chosen, the resulting API will always match the official MPI standard, differing only by the MPI version that the library one has picked supports. This means that the canonical Hello World as, for example, found on the MPI tutorial site. This is the link. MPI should work regardless of which library one picks. In this Hello World example, we can see that we include the MPI.h header. This MPI header will always be the same, regardless of the implementation we use. 
Initializing the MPI environment requires a single call to the MPI init, which can take two parameters, both of which are optional at this point. Here we've written null. Getting the size of the world is the next step. This is done using MPI com size, which takes the MPI com world global variable and updates the second parameter with the number of processes in that world. The rank we then obtain is essentially the unique ID assigned to this process by MPI. Obtaining this UID is performed with MPI com rank. Again, this takes the MPI com world variable as the first parameter and returns our numeric rank as the second parameter. This rank is useful for self-identification and communication between processes. Obtaining the name of the specific piece of hardware on which one is running can also be useful, particularly for diagnostic purposes. For this we call MPI get processor name. The return string will be of a globally defined maximum length and will identify the hardware in some manner. The exact format of this string is implementation defined. Finally, we print out the information we gathered and clean up the MPI environment before terminating the application. In order to compile an MPI application, the MPI CC compiler wrapper is used. This executable should be part of whichever MPI implementation has been installed. First, we reduce our path size. Now, type in this command. Using it is, however, identical to how one would use, for example, GCC. This would compile and link our Hello World example into a binary, ready to be executed. This is our generated binary file we would use, and this is our MPI Hello World program. We have to run one more command, that is lamboot. Executing this binary is, however, not done by starting it directly, but instead a launcher is used. We'll use MPI exec. Here's the output. The output is from OpenMPI running inside a bash shell on a Linux system. As we can see, we launch four processes in total. The processor name is reported as the host name for each process. You can see test as a host name for each process. The binary to launch MPI applications with is called MPI exec or MPI run or OR T run. These are synonyms for the same binary, though not all implementations will have all synonyms. For OpenMPI, all three are present and one can use any of these. That's all about MPI and compiling MPI applications.